channel Zed Majestics and welcome back to another Remnant 2 tips and tricks video. Today we are chatting about the hardcore mode. I am assuming that if you're watching this video that you have either completed Remnant 2 already, know a little bit about the game and the hardcore rewards that are obtainable and so on because I will be using some terminology and phrases so if there's anything that you don't understand please feel free to put in the comments below. Let me tell you, I was all fucking nerves when I started my hardcore experience. I mean, I have over 400 hours in the game, yet I was hella nervous because there are three things that I personally had troubles with, which are gravity, bugs, and the Q boss along with Venom. It was fun, definitely a lot of stress, but also a very, very accomplished feeling. If there's one piece of advice that I can give you is that please take your time with a hardcore run. I mean, there's absolutely no need to rush anything through unless you're doing like a specific challenge or whatever but the point is to take your time get the resources to help you carry through the game and defeat that final boss this was my character when I ended up finishing hardcore with. I didn't have a loadout because I had this weird strange ass bug where my loadouts would literally change mid fight and I did not want to risk that during my hardcore run at all so let's get into it solo versus duo now you can go into the hardcore run solo or if you're fortunate enough with a duo partner you can only join or host hardcore sessions having a duo partner with me during the hardcore run did have its benefits and it did make things a little bit easier in some aspects but we also did face some challenges when we were fighting the cute boss my partner Lex she was actually waiting at the world zone when I was giving the boss a go and somehow we lost network mid fight I had a little mistake and I know I technically should not have gotten hit or even die but the point is I lost connection and I was streaming I was being active in discord there was literally no reason for this to happen but this resulted my character into going to the hall of dying and that was the end of my run completely but the upside is that Lex's character was fine she didn't die but I had to start from scratch this really did push me to see how fast we can get a brand new character up to snuff and ready for this hardcore run <clears throat> for the fourth time. To make things a little bit easier, you can start your hardcore character on Survivor just to start farming some of the resources that are easy to grab early on. So for example, I would recommend the Thane Fruit just to give you that extra chance in hardcore in case things went tits up. The tree can grow in the ward while you are out there farming and eventually you will have a little stash just in case. While you are out and about and on your farming spree, why not pick up a few traits that are relatively easy to get. This is for example bark skin which is really good amplitude if you're going for anything like a heal alchemist dots type of vibe regrowth i personally wanted this so i leveled up similar to level 10 and i had the passive active the best place to form trade books we've noticed and resources was in losum mora parish a lot of the books were located outside in the overworld and because of the shotgun and the miasma it was destroying everything including the buildings including the pots everything and we just ended up having such a nice farming spree along with our scavenger bauble. I think the question that I get asked the most is that what is the best archetype to start with? This is highly dependent on your playstyle. Some people prefer the Archon class purely because the Enigma it is very strong especially in like groups of mobs. Some people prefer the Challenger for that extra get up and especially like during a solo run I can see how the handler can also be very viable. I did try various classes but the two that worked for me the most was the Alchemist along with the medic. It really did help me with the heals, the consumables, the general survivability of our characters to be honest. If you did unlock any of these archetypes prior hand on your like your main character then they will be obtainable in War 13 just for you to go and grab and level up. The medic pin you can find, majority of the archetypes can be found by Wallace and the rest will be all over. I feel like each archetype does have their own benefits and so forth but from all the combos that I've tried I did find that the medic alchemist really fitted to towards my play style for this very specific hardcore run. So let's chat about weapons. If you're not a fan of your starter weapon, which I completely understand a lot of people aren't, grabbers in War 13 might be able to help you out or you can go and try and find something that you will enjoy. Just be careful, don't get cocky, don't get greedy, shit is still very hard to do. I knew exactly what weapon I wanted to go into
into this fight with. I'm a huge fan of the Merciless, which was relatively easy to get. It did allow us to farm Yisha, obtain Scavenger Bauble and the Sage Ring, some trade books, Bark Skin, some really cool quests, and it also allowed us to farm for materials. I did break all the pots, I did grab the chest to get the Relic Fragments, the Relic Dust and other materials. I would say one of the important things when it comes to hardcore is to work on your general survivability. You can have a look at the medic for some heals. There's also the constrained heart for bulwark. It was a random world drop, the whispering marble, which was kind of scary to get in the Waken King DLC, considering these like exploding boys. Um, but there's also consumables and throwables. You can also pick up the black cat ban from Reggie. I spammed damage reduction injection. I did use the stamina injection as well as some crit damage just for that extra sass. Don't upgrade too much too fast. On oh, Libby Tully, there was also this thing going around. It was like a rumor and a Reddit thread going around that if you do not upgrade at all, or if you just upgrade very, very little, then the bosses in the last biome specifically will be a blast and you'll run through it. Let me tell you though, it might be easy in the sense that the bosses don't do as much damage to you, but neither do you. I mean, you're going to end up running out of ammo boxes, consuming and something is eventually going to take you out. We did fight the boss on power level 15, world level 14, and this was honestly the first time that I've ever been higher than the world level. Let's chat about some of the points in the game that is known to be troublesome. The Q boss, oh, everyone's favorite. If you are solo, I'm sorry, I'm gonna say it, but you're gonna have to get good, sadly. This boss is made to make you panic, but it is pretty straightforward. You just have to keep track of the blocks, the purple, and then you are sorted. Venom, oh boy, let me tell you, I am so salty with this guy. He has wiped one of my previous hardcore characters and kind of like party wiped us as well. Very, very angry. But I feel like he is honestly the hardest boss in the game. I personally had a lot of issues with him, but you just got to be patient, read his abilities, listen to the sound cues and absolutely wreck him. Random mobs or bugs that might be in your way, even gravity, there were a few times that we had some troubles with elites and random mobs not wanting to die and they just kept following us even after we killed them, network connection loss and so forth. And even though I'm not a fan of safe scumming, especially during a hardcore run, and I have died to bugs before. I don't know a lot of people will back up their save file just in case that happens. But then you also get some people that just save skim permanently and finish the run and then claim they finish the run. That is something else. Um, yeah. <laughs> when we finally felt like we had everything we wanted and needed, we started our veteran hardcore campaign. We are not a huge fan of New Rude. I feel like it's kind of hard as the first biome to deal with. So we did it first, made sure we got Tal Ratha as the world boss a little bit easier than Shahana, and we took it from there. We did only do the dungeons that was related to the quest and the story to run through the campaign all the way to the end game. When we fought the last boss, it was so majestic. I'll put that at the end of the video. All in all, it was very stressful yet a very fun experience and the rewards are absolutely worth it. If you are a fan of the previous titles such as myself, you will most definitely enjoy this specific reward you get from completing the run. Too long didn't listen to the video, here are the tips. Don't rush, don't get greedy, the game will slap you back into reality. Work on your general survivability, farm for resources, play the archetypes and the weapons you feel comfortable with. Don't stress too much, I mean I feel like I actually worked myself up absolutely no reason and we ended up enjoying the game and it wasn't as stressful. But there you have it, these are some of the things that we personally did during our hardcore run. There are some people that completed this within a few hours, a couple of days, weeks and months, but really no one is rushing you or forcing you. Take your time, enjoy the game and enjoy the run. If you have made it this far, I really, really appreciate you. Please remember that I do stream Monday to Fridays over on Twitch. You're welcome to come join the vibes over there. And also please remember to like this video if you found it helpful. Subscribe to the channel to get the notifications on when the next video drops and I will see you real soon. Bye everybody!